to Royal Portrush. Um, you recorded your best ever finish in the Open last year at Carnoustie. How confident are you feeling about your chances this week and maybe going one step further? Yeah, well, finally, I, you know, bettered my um, position as a 17-year-old amateur last year, which was exciting. I've been kind of waiting a long time to do that. Um, really enjoyed the run I made on the weekend last year. And, uh, you know, any time that you're in contention to win an Open, you know, it's an amazing feeling, especially, you know, um, being a home home player. You know, I think it's a... Uh, it's the one that we all dearly love to win. So that was fun. Um, yeah, you know, that's the goal, isn't it? To go one better this year and, and to get your hands on the jug. So um, game is ticking along in the right direction. I'm chipping away at it. I feel like um, sometimes if you come in absolutely pure in it a week or two ahead of time, it can be tricky to keep it going for, for so long. So I feel like I can really build into this week. You know, and Lynx golf isn't always about being perfect either. So I... It's about learning the golf course, and I came up here Wednesday, Thursday, Friday last week to really try and understand the golf course and, and how to get round here. So, um, so far we haven't seen much in the way of weather, but that could obviously change. Okay, thank you, Justin. We'll open the floor to questions. If you raise your hand, we'll get a microphone to you. Microphone number one. Hey, Justin, just talking about last year, what did you do differently last year that worked for you at the Open, and what can you take from that to bring to this year? Well, you know, obviously I, I had to make about a 15-footer to make the cut on, uh, on, on Friday afternoon or Friday evening. So I wasn't doing a lot different at that point. Um, but I think going out there and freewheeling a little bit um, on Saturday, Lynx courses will offer you sometimes the opportunity to play aggressively if you have nothing to lose. They're all about avoiding the bunkers. But just typically, if you're in contention, there's a lot of irons off the tee. You're always trying to avoid the pop bunkers. But... You know, there's always the opportunity to, to force the issue and, and try and get some wedges in your hand. And I played a little bit more aggressively on the Saturday, and then I had that nice run on Sunday, eagled 14, and I did a good job of when the when the moment arose, staying free and playing. You know, uh, just because I then suddenly had a chance, so I played freely all all weekend long, basically. And then um, I remember four holes to play. I really told myself to stay stay as free as I could, and I did a good job of that coming in and birdied 18 to. At the time, post a number that, that felt relevant, you know, and um, Francesco, obviously, I think he birdied 18 to win by two in the end. But, you know, his drive skirted the, the right-hand bunker and, you know, I think there were two or three other guys in second place. But, you know, it's, I was there or thereabouts, which is great. Yeah, definitely. That's definitely more of the intention, for sure, is uh, just obviously be focused and, and, and be disciplined with the preparation and the, and the game plan, but not be reckless. You know, I'm not going to go out and hit drivers day one, um, but I'm going to play. You can still play with freedom, you know, even though you're playing with respect to the golf course. Okay, next question from Mike from number two. Uh, Justin, a, a lot has been made, quite rightly, of um, the Open coming back to Port Rush after such a long time. What, what, if anything, feels different about an Open being here? from your experience so far? It feels very different. You know, I had the opportunity to spend a little bit of time up here and um, frequent the, you know, the Harbour Bar in uh, Port Rush. And I just think that people are very proud of their, their little piece of the world up here. And it is very special. As, you know, the golf courses are unbelievable. Um, but the hospitality, I think, is, is fantastic up here. And it, it just, everyone's been really welcoming. and. That, that seemed, because it, hasn't, it has been so long, people are a bit very excited about it. That feels different. Um, but yeah, it, it feels a little bit different up here for sure than, than, than the routine um, venues that we're used to on the rotation. Okay, Levine, microphone number four. Actually, that was more or less my question was to ask you, Justin, about the friendliness of the, you know, to what extent does the course feel friendly and uh, the, the place itself? Yeah, well, the course hopefully we'll become feeling friendly. We'll have to, that's probably more my doing, but the rest of it is obviously the, the local people's doing. And, um, you know, like I just said, the hospitality here is, is unbelievable. And, you know, people are excited to see all the pros in town, but no one, you know, for example, you know, I had a few, you know, Guinnesses the other night and just people would come up and, you know, ask for a quick photograph, but no one was really overly, you know, they were, they were letting me enjoy myself um, without, you know, overdoing it I suppose but you know everyone was just it was just nice to be there in town and, and enjoy everyone's company I think so it just felt you know it felt cheery but it felt yeah I, I well I don't know if it was just my my perspective on it I just really enjoyed being in town with everybody so it was probably more my lens than anything else okay next question for my phone number three hi Justin um 
I know it depends a lot on the wind, but I was wondering if you had, uh, you could give us any insight into your game plan approaching the 18th hole. Uh, do you think you're going to maybe try to hit driver uh, into the sort of tighter part of the fairway there or lay further back? I'm just wondering how you're going to approach that hole. <clears throat> yeah, I think I've only really played it with no wind is what it feels like. Um, and 300 yards is a good number off that tee. There's still plenty of room at 300. Now, 300 down a little bit of breeze is probably an iron, but I, I thought it was a three-wood hole for me because you want to be far enough on that hole to be able to get a full, clear sight of the green. It makes it a much more inviting second shot. Um, but it's a, it's a great hole. If you, if you have four to win, you, by hitting an iron, even if you pull it left, you're not reaching the, you know, the trouble. Um, obviously, if you hit driver and you pull it left, you are reaching the trouble. So I feel like three wood was kind of a hedge there somewhere in the middle. And, um, but if you need birdie to force a playoff, for example, you'd probably hit driver. But um, I don't know where the wind is forecast to come from. I thought it was going to be a southeast wind direction the last I looked, but I think it's coming a bit more out of the west. So I haven't quite figured out. I'm going to go and play nine holes this afternoon with the intention of really trying to understand the forecast and how holes might play. Okay, the next question from my phone number one, Mike. Hi, Justin. <clears throat> You've made a couple of fairly major changes over the last year with your equipment um, manufacturer and your caddy. And I just wonder what effect that's had and are things beginning to sort of bed down just in time for the Open? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think the, the changes certainly with the equipment felt like they bedded in really, really quickly. Um, you know, I was testing as early as June last year, so I've been hitting the clubs for a long time. Was that a commercial decision or a sporting decision or a bit of both? That was a sporting decision, I think. You know, I really think that the, the little bit of flexibility that I have within the contract, you know, 10 clubs I get to use, that gives me some wiggle room. It gave me the ability to change putters, which is something that I really wanted to do. The putter that I've switched to has a sort of a proprietary technology that I wanted to, that I thought could really help me. And I was forbidden for using that under my previous arrangement. So I really looked at it, you know, what could be the scenarios for me to try and be the best player I can be in the, you know, the next three, four, five, six years? And, and I think that switching to Honma gave me that. They gave me everything that I wanted in terms of reassurance. You know, the master craftsman in Sakata, Japan, can pretty much make me anything that I want, but the line that they come out with is, you know, unbelievable. The driver was, you know, that was the gamble, if you, you know, so to speak, and it's been surprisingly good. So, you know, that's been, that's been fantastic. So I don't feel like I've given up anything anywhere from that point of view. And the caddy situation was something that was a bit unforeseen. Um, you know, food controversy, went through heart surgery, and it's just tough, tough, tough situation, I suppose. And, um, but, you know, Lordy has stepped up, and, you know, Fuchs and Lordy have a great dialogue between them. And, you know, whether Lordy's is taking care of the bag for Fuchs for the future or not remains to be seen. But, I you know, I hope there's a situation in the future where we can all work together. So, um, but, yeah, that's something that I've had to adapt to. And, uh, yeah, I mean, the change is you make it with the best intentions. But, yeah, it still, it still is change at times. So to answer your question, um, I feel comfortable with it all. So it's now just up to me to go out and execute. That's probably been more of the problem, really, is that I haven't just, you know, the, I've been just looking for the game and looking for the, the, neck, the, you know, the right gear, really, I suppose, the last month or two. OK, the next question from microphone number two. Justin. Uh, nine out of the last ten majors have been won by Americans. I wonder if you could offer any sort of insight or explanation as to the recent emergence of that trend. Well, the boys are pretty good. I mean, there's no doubt. Um, I think that the aggressive style of golf that they've been playing has uh, has sort of contributed to that. Um, you know, obviously Brooks has had a fair few of those, so you know he's obviously on, a, on an awesome run. Um, but other than that, I don't really think. There's a reason why, I mean, obviously, Francesco, um, you know, I could have easily won last time out at uh, Pebble. Um, you know, Rory's a threat whenever he, you know, whenever he wants. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's a, it's, a, it, it's a cycle, you know, and hopefully that's a nice run and hopefully it's coming to an end. <laughs> okay, you're in at the back. Justin, you've said to us before that you think being a multiple major winner would give you a completely different kind of standing in the game to, to one major. Within that, if you were, you were the Open champion, I'm not pensioning you off, but, but how would you evaluate your own career to, to add an Open championship to, to the one you've already got? Yeah, I mean, I think if you've won both Opens, essentially, I think that that's a lovely pair, no doubt. Um, you know, that would be halfway towards a Grand Slam. So if I was able to do that, then I would immediately shift to, okay, I'm 50% of the way there. So, you know, 
the next one is really important for me because you know it makes the next two feel possible. You know, when you're when you're when you're a quarter of the way there, it's quite an, it look, you know it's quite an uphill climb. But when you get halfway, you're kind of at the tipping point. So um, you know, for sure, the next one, next major is is going to be an important one for me. It doesn't surprise me. You know, they're hard. They are hard to win, and you've seen great players not win one. So I'm still obviously grateful to have that major under my belt. But but certainly, I, I think I've had three second place finishes in majors since then. So um, I've had I've had a couple of opportunities for sure. You know, Augusta could have. That was one arm in the jacket type situation, and you know, but you never skip through a career without a little bit of heartache along the way. So um, I feel like. Yeah, I'd like maybe a couple more chances, but I've definitely given myself some looks. And if I keep doing that, I, I know the door will open again. OK, the next question from number three at the front. Justin, um, you have one year away from uh, defending your Olympic title. As now, uh, how important is uh, Tokyo Olympic to you? And uh, how important is this week considering the Olympic? Yeah, I mean, I think obviously, you know, I know the Olympics isn't a major, but it's could have almost been treated like one from the crowd and from people that I come into contact with on a daily basis. So, you know, even though maybe I haven't won a major since Mary, and I think the Olympic gold has been a very nice addition to the to the career and resume. And for sure, 2020 Tokyo is going to be a, a huge priority. Uh, right now, it's a, it's still very much over a year away, so it's not not in not in my mind, but very much focusing on the major championships this year. But certainly. To be a two-time Olympic champion and to, to wrap up, you know, an eight-year cycle would be would be unbelievable. And I think, um, you know, golf in Tokyo is going to be well supported by all of the all of the top players, in my opinion, this time around. And um, I think it's going to be a fantastic showcase for golf. Okay, next question from microphone number one. Um, Justin, just a quick one: Is it a myth, or does the Guinness really taste different over here? Well, when it's your first or one of a very few, it does taste different up here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not experienced enough to really make that. That. that uh, but I think the environment helps, no doubt. It could be a secret weapon this week. You think? No. One and it's... done. The one and done. You know. I think that's why I like coming up to these places before the tournament starts, because once Championship Week rolls around, you're in bed early. You're doing. You know. You're, you're in your disciplined approach that you are all the time. But it, it's such a shame to come to these venues and not be able to enjoy them. And sometimes that is the case. You know, when you're a professional golfer, you have to. You know, stay focused. I suppose so. You know, when I do come up for these preparation trips, they do feel like you know mini boys trips in a way, where you can kind of play a bit of golf. You have Port Rush to yourself in open championship condition, and you get to go to the pub and have one or two. So, who wouldn't want to do that? Yeah. So, it, I mean, in a way, Guinness is you know it's full of iron. It actually could it could propel you on. I, I like the way you're angling for your headline here. But, uh, <laughs> uh, <I can't>. <laughs> <laughs> so cynical. Popeye. <laughs> Okay, the next question from the back, number two. Justin, you've, you've spoken about wanting to play more freely and, and certainly start this week playing that way. I'm just wondering what you're doing on and off the course to maybe help that along. Yeah, off the course is an important part of it, just to enjoy the week. I have my family here as well this week, and um, you know, my little boy has suddenly gone cricket, cricket mad after the World Cup. He's in the garden at all, you know, until basically the sun goes down and he said, Dad, come on, can you bowl a few at me, bowl a few at me? And so, you know, that kind of thing, you know, for example, if you're in contention and it's a great distraction to be able to take your mind off the golf and just enjoy having your family around. That helps you stay loose and stay free. Um, but there's nothing really, nothing else really matters until you get on that first tee. And that's when you've got to just make that shift. Um, I'm experienced enough to know sleeping on a lead I can do that, no problem. Um, that's not going to be a factor. It's just, it's about execution. You know, if you give, us, you give yourself that opportunity to win, it's about hitting the right shot at the right time. That's what it comes down to. Okay, just to follow on that, do you have a, a go-to moment or a trigger when you say when you walk on that first tee to get you in that mindset? No, just the good old cliches, you know, one shot at a time, not always not getting too far ahead of yourself. But yeah, for me, it's about really at that point, trusting your training, trusting your routine. I learned, not learned, but I had to, I, I realized at Pebble that I didn't do a good enough job early in the round of, of basically zoning in enough. I was very, I just, there was a lot of distraction during that round and I uh, just didn't do a good enough job of, of 
basically blocking it out. So you know that will be something that I will be aware of. Um, so you're always learning, but you know for the most part you trust yourself as a champion just to be able to know that you've done it before, you can do it, and uh, just to go out and execute. Okay, we'll take the four questions left in the room and then we'll call it a day. Um, number four at the back there. Hi there, you've, got a, you've had a few practice rounds under your belt now. I just wanted to ask you how you've played the 17th in practice and what your strategy for it might be during the week. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting hole the way, you know, especially for a 17th hole of an open, it, I feel like it's, uh, it's, a, it's a quirky hole for sure because it's not really drivable, but it's, you know, you hit driver over the top there about 300 yards and it gets down within 20, 30 yards of the green. Um, it plays quite narrow because of the way the camber tilts right to left. You've got to really thread the driver up the right edge of the fairway in order to get it down short of the green there. Um, but it's, it's very tempting. If the wind is at all, if, unless the wind is hurting, I think it's, I, I'll hit driver. Um, pin placements will be a factor. I think the only tricky pin really, if you do hit driver, is the left pin where they can stick it behind the bunker. That might be better to lay up onto the top of the hill and have something where you can control your spin coming into that pin. So. Um, but it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a it's a really sort of unique hole, especially at that point of the championship. Okay, next one for my phone number three, Derek. It's the ambition to play well enough this week to get Leo to pick up a golf club instead of a cricket bat. <laughs> yeah, I think well, yeah, that would be nice for sure. Although uh, it's proved quite difficult, to be honest. Um, I just wonder, four weeks not playing coming into this event, I'd imagine that's uncharted territory going into a major. What what was the thinking, and are, are there any concerns? Well, I think, you know, we're all just trying to adapt to this new schedule, this new rhythm of the majors, and they definitely, they seem to be coming thick and fast at the moment. And um, it's all about trying to peak, valley, and then peak again. And, you know, it's such a short period of time in, in which you're able to, to do that, to, to sort of try to, yeah, there's always that drop off after a major or, you know, from an intensity point of view anyway. Um, this is uncharted territory for me to take time off between majors for sure. Um, it always coincides with coming back to the UK where there's always just a little bit of pressure to catch up with family and, and, and want to catch up with family, you know, those weeks are precious. So it's just a balance at this point in terms of professional, you know, strategy in terms of preparing for it and then also just lifestyle and having a life and, and seeing family and friends that you haven't seen for a long time. So it's a learning curve this year, I would say, so we, we will see. Okay, the next question for microphone number two. Yeah, on the schedule, um, how much of all of that is all sort of with the majors in mind? And do you feel like, you know, coming up to this point now, you've sort of got it all figured out, or do you still like, is this still sort of a trial and error period of figuring out what's going to work? I think it's still definitely trial and error for uh, figuring out what, what's going to work. Uh, you know, for one major a month really, I think, is too, my opinion is they're, they're too soon. They're, it's, uh, it's, too, it's too condensed. Um, just the. Uh, as a professional in terms of trying to peak for something, the process that's involved in trying to do that, it can be detailed and it can be longer than a month. So that's my reasoning for that. But I also think, you know, it's pretty much driven by FedEx Cup wanting to finish on a certain date, everything else having to fit in where it can. And, uh, you know, for me, the major championship should be the, you know, the things that are protected the most. Um, you know, that's how all of our careers are ultimately are going to be measured. You know, 30, 40 years ago, the, there wasn't a FedEx Cup. So, you know, you, you, if you're trying to compare one career to another career, Jack versus Tiger, you know, it's the majors that are, that are what we're going to, they're the benchmarks. So for them to be tweaked so much, I think it's quite interesting at this point. Okay, next question from my phone number one. Um, as an Englishman, how much inspiration do you draw from the, the cricket success? And um, are you comfortable going to extra time yourself if needed this week, the stress of that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously, it's, it, if you look at... Well, you could look at sort of Fedor Djokovic, too. I mean, that was essentially extra time as well. You know, it was, a, it was a hell of a day of sport. I was running between two different rooms, watching you know, tennis, cricket, tennis, cricket. It was... It, but, it, you know, to your point earlier, what you're asking me, it, it comes down to execution in the moment. That's what wins a tournament or doesn't win a tournament. So whether it's extra time or whether it's the 70-second hole, there's going to become a point if you're going to win a tournament that you have to pull off the right shot at the right time. So it doesn't matter for me when it is. OK, this will be the very final question. Louis. Um Justin, you talk about the importance of... Um changing clubs and getting them absolutely right. Did you ever at any time in your career have a club which you couldn't bear to part with? 
No, not really. Um, probably when I was maybe back when I was about 14. Yep. You know, I had a little ram zebra putter that I seemed to make a lot of putts with back then. Um, but I've always been very open to change and I've always believed that unless you make so you can you can get away with not changing your clubs once a year but you know clubs and technology is changing so fast or at least has changed so fast in the last 10 years that you can't get away from not making changes any, every two years you're going to be behind the curve someone else is going to have an advantage so for me I've always been quite keen to change and change with the times and move with the times in terms of technology so um, from that point of view I've never fallen in love necessarily with a putter or a, or, or a particular club. Putter is probably the one exception where technology maybe is one that you can you don't need as much of. So did you throw away that little putter, or where is it? It's in a store. Is it? No, I have it somewhere. It's uh, with about nine million other putters because uh, you know that's that's you're always looking for the secret, aren't you, with the putting? You always want something that's going to get the ball in the hole for you, but ultimately it comes down to you. Okay, everyone, thank you for your time. Dustin, very best of luck right. this week. Thank you.